What's going on everybody? Alex here, Nickens Lawn and Landscape. And let me just set the record here. No, I did not get hurt. No, I did not sell my business. No, I am not dead. I've gotten all kinds of crazy questions since we did our last YouTube video and they're all false. I'm still here, I'm still kicking. We've just been extremely, extremely busy. I wish I would have pulled the camera out more over this, uh, we'll just call it this summer, over the stretch that we uh, did not do any videos. But I didn't, I was trying to handle business and honestly just grow my business and make sure that we were growing in stride and not growing too quickly. So uh, that was kind of my focus here over the past couple months. A lot of things have happened since we did our last video. I got a dog, I got married, I hired two new awesome employees and things have just been really, really good. Uh, when this year started, when this coronavirus started, uh, and you would have said, that work was gonna take off for us. I would not have believed you in a million years. I was honestly really, really worried. I was uh, losing sleep over it a lot actually in the beginning stages. But as those of you that are in lawn and landscape can probably agree with me, our work was, at least those of us that are in residential, let me, let me say that, but our work was very, very fruitful this year. People were looking to do a lot of projects and it worked out really, really well for us. All right, guys and girls, so before we dive into this video, which is gonna be all about our leaf trailer, uh, most importantly, how we mounted our loader back there, we have had hundreds of people hit us up. That is no exaggeration. Hundreds of people, email, website, text, call, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Every platform we're on, everywhere we're available, we have had people ask us how we mounted this loader. So we're gonna go through that today. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we did. It is a custom bracket. But like I said, before I dive into this, I got a couple things I wanna take care of. First off, I wanna say thank you to Milwaukee Tools. We have been fortunate enough to uh, partner up with them and get a few tools before they are released. So thank you to them. I got a lot of new Milwaukee Tools we'll be showing you guys throughout the next few videos. Next thing I wanna do is open this package here. This is from our little buddy down in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm not gonna show you his address, but he wrote all over this thing and put please open on cam. He pretty much wrote this on every surface of this box. So I definitely, I got this a long time ago guys, but I haven't done any videos. He addressed this to me and Nick. Unfortunately, Nick couldn't be here today, but it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. I didn't wanna do a video without opening it up. Um, so we're gonna open that up and see what he sent us. All right, let's go ahead and open this up and see what Ramsey sent us. I'll link a video here if you guys don't know Ramsey. We did a little, like I said, birthday shout out for him. And I'll link that here so you guys can check that video out. That is so cool. Okay, so I think he's eight years old. I wanna say he's eight, maybe nine. But this is his business card. Actually, I wanna show you guys this. There's nothing, make sure. Yeah, no address on there. So if you guys are in the Scottsdale, Arizona area, let me get this to focus here. Scottsdale, Arizona, call this guy. For all your lawn care needs, aspiring entrepreneur, two years experience. That is so cool. Congrats, Ramsey. That's cool. Then he drew our logo. Last time he sent us pictures, so I think he's sending us some more pictures here. So he drew our logo there. He's probably doing this at school whenever he's bored. This is what I used to do at school, draw pictures. So we got that one. We got this one, there it is. He knows what mowers we're running. You got the red, you got Alex and Nick, we're out there mowing grass together. That's awesome. And he knows I'm on the stand on. No, just kidding. That's so cool. He even got my hat on there. If you guys have seen my sun hat, I always got the strings dangling down. That's what those black lines are on the side. That's so cool. Thanks buddy. We got some more stuff in here too. Let's see what else he sent us. We got a gravely pen. Nice. Another business card. So 
some steel shades. Looks like they're used. These are field worn by Mr. Ramsey himself putting in the landscape work. Check that out. Souvenir. And this one says, Dear Alex and Nick, I would like to thank you for the video and the merch. At my house, I have a business card collection from random landscapers. What I would like to ask you is, can you send me one of your cards for my collection? Of course, we'll definitely send you a card. Already starting collections of business cards and he's eight years old. Smart kid. C. I also watch Spencer's Lawn Care, JC's Lawn Tips, Copper Creek Cuts, Wyatt's Lawn Service, Stett's Lawn Care, Pro Cut Lawn Care, Brian's Lawn Maintenance, Ambrose Landscaping, Tony's Lawn Care, Lawn Care Life, BPM Lawn Care, Cato Lawn Care, Blades of Grass Lawn Care. So those of you guys that are on this list, maybe leave a comment for Ramsey. And if you're not on this list and you have a channel, apparently he watches a lot of people. So that's super cool. He's very, very into lawn care, guys. So if you're one of these guys, leave him a comment down there. And Ramsey, keep watching these videos, buddy. You're going to be miles ahead. Sorry, my head's cut off here. You're going to be miles ahead of everyone your age. It's really cool that you're into it. And I know personally, I know a handful of guys on this list. And uh, they have some very, very valuable information that is going to come in handy, whether you're in lawn care landscaping or whatever business you're in, just life in general. There's some very, very good dudes on this list. So Ramsey, uh, smart kid. You're very smart catching on to these. And other guys that are new to these videos, check out a few of these guys as well as our videos and you may learn a thing or two. So Ramsey, thank you for all your cool stuff. I appreciate the package, man, and I will get you some cards sent out ASAP. All right, now let's dive into this trailer and I'll try to help everyone who requested some info. It was mainly on our mount, like I said, but everyone who requested some info, we'll try to go through and answer all those questions. All right, so I'm just gonna dive right in here. Those of you guys that don't know this setup, again, if you're new to the channel, this is a 14 by seven rice dump trailer. We got these signs custom made last year. And we got this loader last year. Now, this thing is an absolute beast. This is a 37 horsepower. It is the Billy Goat, of course, but it's a 37 horsepower fuel injected engine. It's the DL37, and it's just an absolute powerhouse. But I'm gonna go into, so on our sides, all of our walls and everything, that's just two by fours and four by eight sheets of plywood. You can see we got two by fours running across the top, but you wanna avoid any two by fours going in here on the walls. If you have two by fours or any kind of object sticking out, it's gonna wanna hold those leaves back when you're trying to dump. So the only thing that we have going down our walls is another thin piece of three quarter right here. And that's just to bridge the gap between two four by eight sheets. The back one's actually six, but that front one is a full four by eight sheet. And then this one we cut to length down here, but we had a little gap right there or the seam, I guess not a gap because there's a two by four right outside there, but there was a seam. So we put those there, but uh, speaking from past experiences, this is our third leaf loader that we've owned, and this is about our 10th setup. So we've had it on all different kinds of trailers, trucks, the whole nine. This is what works best for us, but don't put any objects on your walls. I guess the front would probably be okay, but don't put any objects here or here. It will hinder your dumping, I promise you. And this side, same thing. So I'm just gonna dive right in to the mount, basically. We wanted this on the back of the trailer because it makes it way easier when you can back up to a pile or back down someone's driveway or back into a cul-de-sac. Now, sometimes if you're just on a straight road and you can blow all your leaves to the curb, 
it really doesn't matter because you can just drive along it, whether it's in the middle, the front, the back, it really doesn't matter. We just really like our setup on the back of the trailer. It makes our access way better, way easier, and at the end of the day, it's just way more efficient to be on the back rather than the side. For cul-de-sacs, backing down driveways, uh, piles that are in really awkward spots where you can't necessarily get in there and jackknife your trailer. So all in all, uh, if you're creating your setup, if it's already on the front, I don't know if I'd go through all the trouble to put it on the back unless it's going to be your setup for a long time, then I would. But uh, if it's a short term setup, I probably wouldn't switch it. But if you haven't designed it yet, there is 0% chance that I would put it on the front of my trailer. So that's just my uh, O2. I've been doing leaf removal for seven years now. And in my opinion, the best way, hands down, is on the back of the trailer. So now I'm gonna go through how we mounted it because this loader weighs over 500 pounds. So, and that's just the loader. We put a few accessories on here and that just adds to the weight. So I'm gonna go through and show you guys what we did and we ran it like this all year, did over 100 cleanups and it's solid. We don't have any cracks, nothing like that, no issues. Door still closes like it did day one. So I think this is definitely a solid setup, but like I said, I'm gonna go through and show you exactly what we did and you can judge that for yourself. First thing I wanna note is you definitely, definitely want heavy duty hinges. So our trailer came with this bungee cord. So our trailer came with this hinge down here and this hinge up here, which this hinge got ripped off at one point. It had nothing to do with this loader. It wasn't loader related. We were dumping and the door got pinched, but uh, that's why that one looks different. But we had the top one and the bottom one. We added this middle one, which is bigger than the top and the bottom, but basically we got a hinge going along this whole door. And if I were to do it again, what I would do is cut off all factory hinges and I would put one solid hinge top to bottom and you will never have to worry about it. That will be way more sturdy. And the only reason I would do that is just for ease. Right now it just looks kind of crappy. There's all different pieces, different welds, different sizes, different gauges. So uh, doing it again for aesthetics and again just for long term success I guess or for long term uh, just for longevity of the setup I would go hinge bottom to top or whatever top to bottom I would do one solid hinge not three separate hinges but definitely you want uh, at least the majority of that gap from the top to the bottom covered in hinges so definitely start there and then from there what we had to do, and every loader is going to be different, so you got to measure your loader. You got to measure front to back and then side over to the other side. You got to figure out exactly how big your loader is, and that is going to determine how far you have to come off here, off of your door. You're going to have to come out. You don't want any loader hanging out past your bracket. Definitely want that bracket to be at least as big as the loader, if not bigger. So that's gonna be your first thing. You're gonna determine basically the size that this rectangle, in our case, needs to be on the trailer. Or some of you, it may be a square, whatever it may be. And then you're gonna to have to have some kind of support to go up. But before you can determine any of that, what you need to do is look at your loader. Okay, for us, you can see we got a bolt there. There's a few open spaces. So what you're gonna do is search around your loader and you're gonna look at the places you can and can't drill. More importantly, the places you can't drill. So you can immediately start ruling out where certain supports can be because there's not gonna be any way to fasten them. So you're just gonna to have to study your loader and again, do some more measurements. For us, it worked out pretty good. Batteries over here, so we were able to put some bolts in that tray right there. And then on this side, we got the gas tank which can come out, we didn't have to take it out, but you can see we got one bolt right here. The gas tank is in a similar tray, so we got a bolt there, there's another bolt up here, there's another bolt in the back corner of this gas tank right down here. So uh, again, for us, it was pretty, pretty obvious where the supports needed to go once we studied the loader a little bit, but this side's about the same. And for us, and this is the biggest loader on the market, so I don't know if anyone else is gonna have this problem, but for us, literally, if this loader would have been an inch wider, it would not have worked. Or we would have had to really get creative and, and make something happen. But this loader with the extra supports here on the side, that figured in on the width. So we got this on both sides. 
that figured in on the width of the loader was exactly the width of our trailer or of our door here so literally another inch bigger and it would have been a totally different story we may just have to go with a different gauge here or notch something out maybe but i like the way we did it we went with a square tubing frame so this is square this piece coming off the trailer square this piece going across the square and i'm going to crawl under there now and show you guys exactly how i did it or how we did it and we got a little bit of angle under there too here's a few of our handy dandy milwaukee tools but this is one of my favorites right here this little light i love this thing i'm going to use this to show you guys exactly how this thing is constructed so you saw the top man this isn't a very good angle here let's try this Okay, so you saw the top up here. We're going to come under. And right here is extra support. So we got, let me get this light situated. Sorry, I'm trying to, trying to do this here. And I need one more hand. All right, so you got this square tubing that goes all the way to the trailer. That middle one does the same thing all the way to the trailer and then we put a support in between i didn't want to weld something all the way along here and create a gap that was eventually going to rust so i wanted there to be a little air space right here and it worked out really nice for aesthetics too that way it looks nice but right inside this piece of square we have a piece of angle and that's where we put our mounting bolts so you got one there one there and then there's get this light situated here okay so you got bolt here on the angle bolt here on the angle and that piece of angle is just wedged in right there it was cut to the length from piece of square to piece of square so there's just a piece of angle running right there solid welds over here and over there and then we put our bolts in there and then on the trailer side we put one bolt going up through that square tubing so that's that side we got three bolts and it's basically that piece of angle and then that one right there and then this other side is the exact same and this will actually work out nice because I'll get you a different view of this but there's your middle piece right here and then you've got a bolt right there going up on the trailer side and then you've got that piece of angle running right inside that square tubing again with two bolts and we put all of our bolts on the trailer side so it couldn't eventually try to teeter out we maybe should have put one or two more bolts closer to the front we may add those but uh it like i said it worked it worked just fine and i think six grade eight bolts are more than enough for this but that's how we did it and like i said it's been it's been really really solid haven't had any issues out of it so we got solid welds everywhere as you can see nothing is just tacked on or little welds it's all the way around on everything i would highly recommend doing that but all in all this is a really really good setup and i'm gonna try to end this video as quickly as i can here so it doesn't take forever to upload i want to get this out there for you guys that are trying to design your loaders i know i have been saying i was going to make this video but finally found the time i actually just got done with my honeymoon actually kind of still on my honeymoon but uh we did a more of a staycation we're going to call it than a honeymoon just because of all the covid crap we didn't want to be regulated whenever we traveled so uh we want to save that for whenever we can do whatever we want to do but uh for now we just did a staycation and it was really nice uh very very weird to be off work that long but it was super nice so uh that's where i'm going to cut this video if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments if you have any suggestions if you designed your loader and you did something different and uh, you think it was better than mine or even if it wasn't better just an alternative solution definitely leave those down in the comments because i know a ton of people picked up this loader this year so uh or th this summer this fall so they're ready to put it to use and i think by watching a video or two like this and just reading some of the comments and seeing how people set it up i think we can lead everyone in the right direction and get their setups the most efficient that they can be all right guys that's all we got for this one thank you for watching hope everyone is having a great season or did have a great season it's kind of almost over we're gonna be transitioning into snow here and my next video will probably have something to do with snow all right guys that's all we got for this one i'll see you 
in the next one.